to restore the power of two. The power to get wealth must be domiciled with the herds of salvation. However, to qualify for such an endowment, a seldom seen amalgam of spiritual and entrepreneurial news, engendered by clarity of vision, astuteness of work ethics, and the responsibility of faith, must be established and engaged. And along came renowned author, public and motivational speaker, business instigator, facilitator, and kingdom enthusiast, Dr. Charles F. Bucky, to inspire, nurture, provide traction and argument demanded by the Creator for such a bequeathal of kingdom riches. And many lives did the assembly bless that day with this endeavor and the adventure to Eden. And join your feet with men and say, Lord Jesus, anoint your servant to preach your word with simplicity, with sincerity, with soundness of doctrine. Holy Spirit, circumcise my ears and fertilize my heart that the words I will hear will produce tangible results. I will come back with testimonies and testimonials of these words. If you believe me, say amen. Please be seated. I'm so glad to be here. I'm so glad to see my brother Dickin Rotimi and uh, Agwemuri, I used to supply cucumber and uh, potatoes to his uh, supermarket. I'm a medical doctor by training. This is 39 years I left the College of Medicine, University of Ibadan. I also have a master's degree in public administration. My son is a surgeon in Germany, he's an orthopedic surgeon. I also have another son that has PhD in uh, software engineering. I have a daughter that is the administrator of my school and I have another one who is a businessman in Europe. We, in my family we talk Bible, book and business. And um, I'm not going to teach you what I have not experienced. I'm going to share with you what I have, God has done in my life. I want to thank the bishop of this commission I went to Canaan land when I sold the hospital about 23 years back. And I went to Canaan land and I saw what was happening. I stayed in his guest house at Gowan Estate and I saw what was happening and uh, I raised up my hands to worship God. And God said, put down your hands. Observe what is happening. Go back and replicate. And I came back to Ugili and I've replicated very, very well. I came here with my lawyer, Barista Okeya. Barista Okeya, just wave your hand. Praise the Lord. There is a book here I want you to buy. It talks about the pastor's family and finance. I, talk, I heard I'm coming to speak to Dickens' board. But it relates to any family that is a Christian family. Um, I used it to address the Church of God Mission International Pastors Confer Conference in Benin. And uh, that day they bought 1,600 copies in one hour after speaking. It's just 500 Naira new notes. <laughs> or 200 Naira, 200 Naira plus 100 Naira old notes. You can listen to me on uh, Mega FM now, 6.30 every Tuesday. Or uh, Quest FM, 6.30 in the morning, every Wednesday, both in the morning. And you can follow me on, on my YouTube channel, Dr. Charles Apoki. I was looking, we're talking about growing business and self-discovery. If I had continued practicing medicine, I would not have been as rich as I am. 
1983 stroke 84, I don't, can't remember, when Buhari changed currency, I was in final year medical school. And I saw my professor begging a cattle dealer for 20 naira then. And if you want to learn work, you go look your ogre. If this is my professor, a cardiothoracic surgeon, and I come from a very poor home, and this man is begging a businessman money, I better become a businessman. So in 1983, I was 20, I think I was 24 years old. I told myself I will not practice medicine beyond 40. That at the age of 40, I was going to stop practicing medicine and do business. I also made a vow that despite the fact that I know that my classmates are going to become professors in the United States, who they are, none of them will come from the United States or the UK and intimidate me with money in this country. So the first thing is to know who you are. If you don't know who you are, you cannot become what you are destined to become. Crocodiles and lizards look alike, but crocodile cannot jump from a story building and nod its head. But a lizard can jump from a story building and congratulate himself. The same way, a lizard cannot enter a stream where crocodiles are and survive. Proverbs chapter 24, 3 to 5. By wisdom is a house built. By understanding it is established. Through knowledge, its rooms are filled with rare and precious ornaments. So to build a house is not necessarily a building. I call myself, I call my children members of the Apoki dynasty. So I'm building a house. The house of Rothschilds is a business family in Switzerland and they are in five countries. So the house of Apoki is a business and an academic house. We are known for academic intelligence globally. We know book very well, well. So, a house, if you say Ama Ogbonna in Igbo language, it means the, the, the household of Ogbonna. Rumu Okoro, it means the street of Okoro. So, you are, you are sitting down here, you are going to become an ancestor. It's either your children will cast you or bind you if you don't leave anything for them. Or if you leave ancestral blessings for them, even when you die, they will say, call to glory with gratitude to God for a life well spent. We announce the departure of our father to the great beyond. Not only then they promote you enter heaven. But when you die of poverty, they will say, we regret to announce. <laughs> I saw my daughter shouting on some, somebody. Ah, ah, ah. I said, what are you, who are you shouting on? He said, it's one of my tenants. Now my building, no, now my building. You don't they inherit already. <laughs> I will take my bearing from 2 Kings chapter 4, 1 to 7, if you can get it in the Amplified Bible. The wife of the son of the, the son, one of the sons of the prophet cried unto Elisha, saying that my husband, your servant, is dead, and you know that he feared the Lord. But his creditor is coming to take his two sons as slaves. And Elisha said, tell me, what do you have of sale value in the house? In the Amplified Bible. What do you get for your house when them fit by, apart from serving God? So serving God alone will, does not guarantee wealth. Righteousness alone does not guarantee wealth. There is wisdom that you need. Say, so what have you of sale value in your house? The woman said, nothing except a jar of oil. And Elisha said, go borrow vessels. Tell your sons to pour into the containers. If each container is filled, set aside. And then, after some time, the woman told the children, bring me another vessel. And they said that there are no more vessels. And the oil stopped. So the, the expansion stopped. But Elisha gave, you, gave another instruction, if I have time, I will teach you, called echo income. He said, go, sell your oil, and live on the rest. That is, you don't need another miracle. Only one miracle that has taken place, you can live on the rest. 
So, how do you grow a business? Number one, I want to quickly distinguish between an entrepreneur and a businessman. An entrepreneur has an idea, a passion, or a product that he or she intends to introduce to the society. It might not necessarily translate to a business, though they eventually do. Zoom and even Facebook did not make profit in their first few years of existence. But people called venture capitalists, or those who have venture capital, invested. A businessman, however, sees an opportunity in an idea, a need, a want, and desires. There is difference between need, want, and desires, according to Raymond Dugbe. You need food. But you want to eat food in a good restaurant. You desire me. I desire to eat caviar. Caviar is the most expensive meal on earth. It is from the eggs of a fish called sturgeon that used to grow in the Caspian Sea until the Jewish people started. A small cup of caviar can be a thousand dollars. I desire, but the I cannot demand it because the purchasing power is not there. So, if you meet the needs, the wants, and the desires of people, and you make profit, you are a businessman. If you are not making profit, you are not a businessman, no matter your turnover. The Grameen Bank by Muhammad Yunis in Bangladesh has a lot of turnover, but it is not making profit. So, any activity that is not designed to make profit is not a business. But you see, you have to distinguish between gain and profit if you have to grow a business. What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Gain is immediate pecuniary reward. He knows my senior in secondary school. We've known for 52 years. I bought two properties for him, 25 million each. And I sold the two properties for 70 million. And the first one I sold for 35 million. He said, keep the money, keep the money. I said, no, I don't trust bankers nowadays. The money came in too loud. Let it leave my account first then you can bring money back silently. Then I sold another one, 35 million. Now, why is, he, why is he telling me to keep 35 million? There was a time I bought a property for him, um, I think 25 million to a petrol station and 100 feet by 100 feet. And the company I bought from refused, rejected the deal. My lawyer is here, he's part of it. And then I said, you must pay me back the 25 million I paid. And you must pay with 2.5 million interest for keeping my money for one week. Church people remove church mind from your brain. If not, they will just take a playground ball. You will just be mumu. I said, you will give me 2.5 million for keeping my 25 million for one week. He said that if it is, he's a pastor too. He said, if that's what I mean, he will use my 25 million to be trading and will go to court. He will trade it for 10 years, then later court will pass judgment. I said, this guy is a bad guy. I said, okay, add 1 million. He now added 1 million. And I told my brother, we schooled at government college together. I told my brother that he added an extra 1 million to the transaction. And he said, that 1 million, keep it that that is your own. You see, I could have made immediate gain by keeping that one million and not informing him. But because I informed him, I made profit. He sent a helix truck as a gift to me, valued at about 15 million. He's paying for my radio program every year. He sent three million naira to me. Am I fo are you following me here? So, if you want to grow a business, you should not go for immediate gain 
have the philosophy of looking for profit. Profit is futuristic. Gain is immediate. You enter. I sell Gary online. They buy my Gary from the U.S. Don't mind me, I'll be doctor. They say Gary, Gary money, no, they smell. I make sure that the five constant baskets that will be inside is the five constant basket measures. And I might add extra. And I don't grind the grains, the extra cocoa gari, I don't grind it to add. So when I did my Facebook advert, I said, don't eat chaff. Gary, as man, pass man, I saw Gary, pass Gary. Dr. Poki, Gary, pass ordinary Gary. I said, I'm, getting, I'm owing people Gary now from South Africa. I'm owing people Gary that have paid, that have they've produced the Gary. I'm going to ship to them next. So you must decide ab initio. Do I want gain or do I want profit? I was looking at the school we built. We started with five pupils including my last child. And I was looking at the building. I asked the lawyer, if we had to build this house now, he said it's more than one billion. And I have another one in Okokoko that if you enter, it's like as if you are in Europe. We started with five pupils. I was the bus driver. I cleaned toilets. I was the gate man. When I was doing that, people were swelling. Other schools were swelling. Swelling is different from growth. Swelling can be sudden and is usually reversible. But growth is steady and irreversible. Are you following what I'm saying? So, you must have profit in mind before you can grow. Okay. We got that? Now, there are two types of business people or entrepreneurs. There is the opportunity entrepreneur and the necessity entrepreneur. A necessity entrepreneur, oh, Dr. Poki came, he talked about business. Make her find something to do. That one just does because he or she has need for money and wants to do something to just live at the subsistence level. While an opportunity entrepreneur sees an opportunity and latches to it, then it can grow. I'll give you two illustrations. I did a master's in public and administration, and my research project was on the sustainability of small and medium enterprises with special reference to Akamu production in Okorodafi Street in Ugeli. I found out that Akamu production, in I'm not normal, I'm very crazy. I don't do normal things. <laughs> don't mind the way I'm dressed now, it's because I'm coming to talk to you so that you can take me seriously. If you see me in my farm, you won't believe it's the same me. So, I found out that Akamu production has been on there since 1954. My mother carried me on her back past that place. I'm 64 this year. And uh, uh, I tried to understand why Akamu production has, been, uh, has, uh, has stayed. Number one, it's in a poor area. Number two, it's close to the market. Number three, there is a road uh, goes to Afiesere, Ufoma, Kokori. So they had customers, poor customers. And you know, poor people, they get belay quick, past rich person. Poor man, they quick get obstructed labor. I'm talking from real experience. When we went to take delivery at the uh, Oyo Hospital, you just see Mulikatu who just come. The baby is down. But if it's in UCH, where those elite women come, eh, eh, they need a quick born. And rich women, you know, they burn triplets quick. Now, poor people, they burn triplets. Then they will not do fundraising. So, <laughs> so they saw, and the northerners live near there. So they drink Akamu during their fasting. So Baba Ijebu and Mama Agenegbo, they started that business. And that business has flourished. They saw an opportunity. Research has shown that 95% of small of medium, small, and micro enterprises will fail within the first five years. These, those opportunity entrepreneurs are usually not among those that fail because the opportunities will be there. And if your business is to grow, you keep seeing new opportunities inside every opportunity. I'll give you an example. 
I was harvesting cassava. I farm on 40-something acres during COVID. I was harvesting cassava, and um, I had an information that there were 65 acres of land for sale. So I uprooted the cassava. I told them to do a video of me. And um, I did the video. I said, this land is fertile. This is the Aconarium species of cassava, it's six months duration. And this land is not cursed. So come and buy cassava stems. And I have 65 acres of land for sale. If you are interested, come and buy. I posted it on Facebook. Somebody bought 10 acres from the UK. And I told him for each acre you give me, bought 15 acres from the UK. For each acre you give me 50,000. So I got 750,000. And then another person bought 10 acres. He gave me 500,000 on each acre. That's 101 million, is it? 250,000 with one post of less than 300 naira. Then somebody bought cassava stem of 80,000. Are you following what I'm saying? Now, from the sale of those lands, I have started buying and buying. I now have several acres of my own that I am doing land banking with. I don't, I'm always broke. I don't keep money in the bank. I keep money in the land because the value of dollar might not affect my land in Nigeria here. If it catches fire, it will increase in value. Fuel scarcity does not affect it. So I'm buying acres. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to partition them into 50 by 100 and sell later. Because from experience, I started by buying the first land, 11,000. The man that owns Poloko Market, Chief Atori, was the one that introduced me to buying land after youth service. So I bought 11,000. That's where the Jehovah Witnesses build their house now. Today, I don't think there's any pastor or even any denomination, including winners, that will intimidate me with landed properties in Ugili. I have grown that 11,000 naira business progressively Number one, any time I see an opportunity to buy, I buy. When I see where the town is opening towards, I will buy. I will tell you about real estate if time permits. So you, you harness opportunities, and then each opportunity is pregnant. You must take delivery of the business opportunity that is in that pregnancy, that opportunity. The problem with us in the Niger Delta is that we are too easily satisfied. We are too easily fooled. When they see me, they say, Dr. Poki, you don't dress well. Dr. Poki, you don't do that. You see, the, the building I live in is profit. I built that building with profit from my virgin money. When you get money, label it, disvirgin it, impregnate it. Then let the grandchildren become what you spend. Am I talking to somebody here? I will, talk, I will talk about that. So, you see an opportunity. And then, um, what does growing a business mean? Growth is irreversible. Lifting is lifting. It's the name of a man. Cadbury is irreversible. Harley Davidson is irreversible. When your business reaches a certain point, and no matter what happens, it must strive. You are grown a business to a level of irreversibility. It therefore means that it is a purposefully and intentionally crafted business that has the ability to generate momentum. Momentum is a product of mass times velocity. That is to say, and velocity is distance over time. So. It is a business that as time goes on, you can accumulate mass. You can develop speed. I'll give you an example. I told you I started with five students. If I look at the school fees alone, I will not make money. So what do I do? I produce the uniforms my students wear. I produce the stockings they wear. I produce the sweaters they wear. I produce the ties they wear. They eat my snacks. 
prepared in my house. So it is the same snacks, the same rice my wife will cook. That's how we eat breakfast. <laughs> so my, don't look at me like that. <laughs> if there is Igbo quarter in heaven, that's where I want to stay. <laughs> so <laughs> I lived in Abasa. I'm an Igbo man by spiritually. So we cook, we prepare bean spy, um, zobo, whatever, whatever, and we sell. This currency exchange, it is those monies, those 50, 50 naira, 100, 100 naira that has been sustaining the household, not the school fees, because the school fees is locked there. So, and if they pay you school fees, it is three months salary plus tax and expenses. So, that canteen gives, was giving us 40,000 naira every day. 40,000 times five days is 200,000. Times a month is 800,000. Times three times is 2.4 million. Times a year is um, 7.2 million. Canteen. And my daughter is also selling her own somewhere else. You know? Uh, we sell ice cream. We sell. And then I have a printing press in the same school. Did they enter? <laughs> Tell your neighbor, shine your eye. Don't let your certificate become the circumference of your destiny. Sometimes education is an assassin of your intellect if you have not lived in Abba. Your professors always go on strike. You know why? They are not satisfied. Me, I know they go strike. So, I have a transport company inside the school. Any problem you see is an opportunity. Because there are no good taxes in Ugeli, so I carry 200 and something students. They pay me 25,000 naira. Multiply that by a term. I have a printing press. All the exercise books and the notebooks they use in my school are printed in my press. And then we went to Lagos and... Uh, waiting? What did I do? You say waiting? You didn't say, occupy till I come. Now to stay one room, occupy till I come. You say, put your money to use. Make sure not deceive yourself. Don't think that, you know, poor people like rapture a lot. Poor people, they like rapture. It won't be long. The world is ending. You know they end anywhere yet. There, are, there were more catastrophes during Hitler's time, smallpox, uh, plague, and all that, the genocide, the killing of Jews, than now. And you they deceive yourself. You say they rapture, you will just go heaven, go stay. You lie. You they come back here. You will stay here for another 1,000 years. If we not spoil this Nigeria, we go come back here. All of us go there. <laughs> Dr. Foki, Viakwa Lozo. So I, I, income is a spring while wealth is a lake. Income is a spring while wealth is a lake. When you get money, you, the less that exudes out of you, and the more you accumulate, the wealthier you become. Nigeria is a blessed nation, but we are poor because nearly everything in this hall is not produced in Nigeria. If there are any products produced in Nigeria, it's the babies we brought here. Now, I was discussing with Broima uh, Dikinima that businesses in worry don't leave one generation to the other. They, they die before the owner or die immediately after the owner. A business that is irreversible is a business that has reached a transgenerational level. Sabanchi Foundation in Turkey Anything I'm saying, please browse. Sabanchi is S-A-B-A-N-C-I. Sabanchi Foundation in Turkey pays 5% of the annual tax of Turkey. It's owned by a family. One family pays 5%. Turkey is one of the 20 richest nations in the G20. One, nation, one family pays the annual tax. 5% of the annual tax of Turkey. The Beretta, Beretta, Beretta pistol that the American Secret Service uses has been produced in one family for 500 years. 
They've been producing that pistol for 500 years. So in that family, there is no unemployment. The Mac McDonald's can never be poor because it's not only that they own, uh, they, they sell snacks. They asked him, what, where is, what is your strength of business? He says, the properties I own in strategic junctions all over the world. If I talk about the Dan Tata group, Dan Tata's grandfather came to Nigeria from one country selling cola nuts, then Pa'al Hassan Dan Tata, when he opened his first bank account in First Bank in 1910, 10 camels carried his money to the bank. And Dangote is a descendant of Dan Tata. And Dan Tata's fence shares boundary, long boundary, with Dangote's refinery, Dangote and Sago, and is part of the company that constructs the refinery. But when we call family meeting in Roboland and this area, don't look at me like that, you can't do me anything. It is only one rich man that will come, the others will, that will come are Bicycle, Okada, and all that. And that rich man, when he dies, his own children will sell all the properties. There's a hotel I stayed in Nairobi, Stanley Hotel. It's been there since 1902. There is the Baghdash ice cream parlor in Damascus. It has been there since 1895. They've been selling ice cream, even during the Civil War. There is a soap-producing family in Nablus in Palestine. They have been producing soap for 400 years. 400 years. The black man has a stupid brain, has the brain of Esau. Esau was so stupid, he could not have dry meat at home. Anything he caught, he ate. Anything he caught, he ate. He was so lousy that his, mother's, his clothes were in his mother's house. So, for you to grow a business, you must be very futuristic. Let me tell you something. My daughter read education. So she's the one managing the school. My son read computer and, uh, science, as I told you. He has a PhD. So I'm building a polytechnic. I've left primary, secondary, I'm building a polytechnic. That polytechnic, he will be the rector. I don't need to employ a person. PhD, software engineering from Europe. You won't compete with him. My younger, his younger brother made a first class in Europe. He made 9.6 over 10 average in his master's in strategic marketing. So I do I need a business administrator? When they follow me, so I don't come. I don't come. This world come play. Oh. We have come again. We have come. Which kind of life be that? We have come. You're always coming again. I came here to punish poverty that followed me from Okiri. I'm more punish it. My father was gate man to Kumagba. I must punish poverty. Lee Engineering was my neighbor. They used to go to the toilet in the bush behind their house. Lee Engineering has punished poverty. When you come from a poor home, don't blame ancestors. Become the new ancestor that will leave ancestor blessings for your children. <laughs> Only lazy people, stupid Christians, blame ancestor causes. This juju in Uvi there was built by my great-great-great-grandmother at the front or they brought it here. Go to my compound at Otokutu. You will see my younger brother worshipping Agalokwe. Madman, the fear transformer. Ancestral causes not they worry me. Don't stay in church and be useless. Pray and be shaking your head like a concrete mixer because you are not using your brain. Poor people pray I can long and it can loud. I have somebody living near me when he prays as if he's vomiting. <laughs> Yesterday night he was vomiting. I didn't. I thought it was prayer again, and he nearly died. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Most businesses okay. I forgot to tell you about Al Quarin University in Fez, Morocco. 
It was built by Fatima, a Muslim woman. Um, Walmart, Sam Walton. Okay, most businesses that have endured usually started small within the family. How then do they grow to what they are? Number one, they set out to fulfill a purpose. All things work together for good for them that love God, who are called according. I don't do my businesses because of money. Like the two big schools we own, I don't know how much my wife earns. I came to the Niger Delta to be a model for young people that they can feel and touch. Most of those we admire, Lumide, Emmanuel, and all the people, they are Yorubas. My people can't get close to them. They can get close to me. They can come to really, my door is open to my bedroom. I don't have secret. And I don't have old friends because all of us, we die around the same time bracket. I need to have young friends who can bury me. And old people always complain of waist pain. Can't you see the way I'm trim? Yeah. <laughs> you know? So, <laughs> so, you set out to fulfill a purpose. So, we set out that we will raise a new generation. I must pay back what I experienced at Government College Ugeli. So, you don't do expo in my school. And they have known that. So, you must set out to fulfill a purpose for humanity and then place the customer and the people first. Once you place the customer and the people first, your business will grow. Then you must have a fundamental philosophy on which your products and transactions are based. The Sabanchi Foundation I told you about, he said giving back to a nation that has blessed us. Fundamental principles, punctuality. I came here before nearly all of you, and I'm very disappointed. I was to preach in her back. The man told them, doctor, we come early. I had not been there for 10 years. I got to the hall before those rest, I mean, in Umwa, in Oweri. I got there before those resident dead. I was to speak to a cooperative, Afi Joe was telling them. The man, when they come, so, now black man, but Ibo Ibo, he go, I just entered the hall at that time. We, we, you people came late. How can, how can you manage currency exchange? Are you not the same bank managers and bank workers? You came late to a business meeting. Any people is common with black people. That is called CPT, colored people's time. But just browse it, CPT, colored people's time. The king of Ashanti went to London to speak to Business community, a meeting that was to start by 11. He got there by 2 p.m. The journalists had gone. Nigerians in Australia were to receive the Australian prime minister by 11. By 2, they had not seen him. They, they, they were, if you can't be punctual, you can't be rich. Because there are some mornings that will pass before you reach there. I detest lateness. I detest it. I was to speak to one church here, and I charged them. They said by 9 o'clock, I told them 9 o'clock I will be there. 9 o'clock the generator was not on. I leave Abba and come to Gali and resume work by 8 a.m. Because I leave the hotel by 4 a.m. I leave Auchi by 5.30 and resume work. You can't, you can't be sluggish and be rich unless you are a thief. Even Yahoo Yahoo boy is smart. You can't be floppy and lousy and be a harlot. Men, some of you women, men, men don't go even follow now. I saw they were kind of like yours. <laughs> Mumu. You have already invited me. Don't invite me, girls. <laughs> Number two, prompt service. Prompt service. Attend to your customer. Is this madam? Okay, I was to supply your wife cucumber. Oh, is it cucumber or potatoes? By seven something, I was in your supermarket. She said, Oga, how? I said, I practice what I teach. I need your money. You need my product. Until another person will come and supply it before me. Am I talking to somebody? Prompt service. 
One of my drivers did not carry one of my children well. Went late. By 4, I woke up. By 5, I was dressed. 5.30, I started the bus. Boom. I was in EA day. I parked in front of the woman's house. The woman woke up and saw me. So, guy, you sleep here. <laughs> Six o'clock has never... I've been married to my wife for 38 years. Six o'clock has never met her on bed. Some of you that beg money in church, you snore. <laughs> 5.30, 6 o'clock, 7. Then go to sleep a few hours. The Bible says a little sleep, a little slumber, and poverty will come and kidnap you. It said your poverty. That means there is a poverty label waiting for you to just be sleeping and be lousy. Prompt service. The person is at the counter. Attend to the person. Not be, who oh, they sell, oh. they, no, people... This is a dynamic generation. Prompt service. Attend to the person quickly and the person go. That's why your church is growing. All those other churches we belong to, the, we have come again, they will sing and sing and sing. They will bring one elder that does not see where to read the announcement. Uh, then say, Mumu, if you are old, go and stay in your house. Don't come and disturb our church service. Number th P number three, politeness and polish. Politeness and polish. There is a hotel I used to stay in, Abba. Uh, they brought one ugly girl. I like beautiful girls serving me. It increases my appetite. I don't commit adultery. I've been married for 38 years. I've been to the end of the world. I've been to Australia. I've been to the, seen the most beautiful women. I get tempted. I get seduced. Because as a funny man, they will think you're an idiot. I preached in Durban, one with two nuclear reactors like this on her chest. <laughs> two, two nuclear reactors. Just thought I was a stupid man. So, oh, man of God, that was very nice. Now he gave me, some of the breasts reached my neck. Some entered my armpits. My, my chest was hot for three days. I wonder how her husband's chest has not peeled. The next day she was coming again. I said, no, 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 no. But when, when, when a fine girl is serving you meals, it makes meaning. You know, but don't look at her too much if you are with your wife or you don't enter trouble. You know, when she's coming with the meal like this, you will see value for money. You understand what I'm saying? I, what do you need, sir? Why do you feel like a big boy? I, I, when I go to that hotel... Uh, the girl will be talking. I'll say, I'm Dr. Apoki. I hate somebody spelling my name wrongly. He said, Dr. Ayoki. Apoki. Gine Kekoro. I'm speaking English to you. You're telling me Gine Kekoro. Am I a man Igbo person? So I didn't go to that hotel for a long time until they sacked her. Politeness. Polish. I like God is good motors. You see, they are drivers. You see the, the trim. That's the mouth. The eyes eat first before the mouth eats. You see, the Igbo, man, the Igbo nation is the sixth richest tribe in the world and the richest in Nigeria. When you go to Onicha, the Igbo boy will meet you. Madam, come, come. I get her. I get her. Yeah, 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 I get her. I get, you know, get her move. Madam, sit down. Okay, Chuku can wait for more to get you your fuma. Nebe mama unkechi. Ebe mama unkechi is the farthest distance in the market. So you with your long throat from worry, you'll be waiting. And you know, we may have long throat for cold drink. So you'll be waiting. Then he will bring the, the he will, you like this? I say, no, what of this one? And then you say, okay, uh, 10,000, 5,000, 1,000, unko. Then uh, you, you, go, you go say, mommy, you don't try. This man can buy you. Mommy, you don't try. Then you come say, you know, get yellow one. Oh, yeah, make her go bring her and come. Mommy, mom, we will go and bring it. Then before you know, he will get the money for the malt three times from you. He said, okay, Chuku, put in here and gani me moto. Carry this thing to the vehicle. Okay, Chuku will not carry. You feel good. The, what they do to my wife is that by the time my wife gets home, he will call my wife. Mommy, this boy got money, oh. 
Mommy, you don't reach house. I was with Mrs. Idaosa when I went to speak to the pastors. And she said, sit, sit down. I was surprised that she watches my videos. When they wanted to introduce me, say, let's welcome my friend and your friend, Dr. Charles Apoki. That was. Then she invited us for dinner. She said, sit near me. I sat near her. Uh, sir, welcome. Sir, mama, when me, I act as usher for. I act as protocol. Sir, welcome. Where have you been in this church all the years? I said, I've been around. Uh, what do you eat? I say rice and a little bit of salt. Go to my bottom pot and bring the vegetable. And she served me herself. Sir, I am booking you for next year. You know, these poor people have bad mouth. One of the things that will make your business not grow is bad mouth and bad temper. Yanga market has not grown in Oleti today. <laughs> you worry people with your bad mouth. You just, they say you come, wish they worry you. If you don't get money, and I hear you come with, I bet come out too. Your, your, your leg like chewing stick when you, you know, just abuse. Am I talking to somebody here? So, but the Igbos are very polite when they are doing their business and they are getting their money from you. Are you following what I'm saying? Now, there's a man called Peter here that has auto care place. How many of you know it? Go there. The treatment is different. So, the next thing is packaging. Packaging is not pretense. Packaging is the way you carry your product with your logo, your address, to reflect you and to preserve what you are, uh, what you are selling. I'll give you an example. Moody Africa. How many of you know Moody Africa? Moody Africa. On my 60th birthday, you know, Moody Africa started as a small tailor. It was Mofe Damijo that uh, helped him to blossom. So I invited him to come and speak to us. And uh, Moody Africa came. Number one, his looks fit his clothes. He's trim. He doesn't eat after five. L trim. And then he came for my 60th birthday. And then he said, Mary measurement when we I've taken your measurement. He didn't put tape. I was soon random. Don't worry. He didn't put tape on my body. Before you know it, he made a dress. When he brought the dress, he put it in a packet with moody on it. So I was lecturing entrepreneurship in Fupri at one time. So I carried the, the bag as I was going. Somebody saw it. Hey, moody, that dress must be very expensive. Lo and behold, that dress was a quarter of a million. And he supplied three to somebody in this town for 800,000. Then he sprayed one kind of perfume inside the packet. Such that when you smell it, you think it's from Europe. Then, then I was lecturing entrepreneurship. I was teaching my people about packaging and branding. I told them to inhale the bag. They, they, they now inhaled it. Before the thing came to me, the aroma had gone. So packaging. Then, the next thing is presentation. Presentation. The way you present a meal to your husband matters. The way you present anything. Uh, there's the story of Yoruba boy, Igbo boy, and uh, Calabar boy selling yam, bread, and whatever. The Yoruba boy went to, and they were, it was in a synod. The Yoruba boy told the bishop, Bishop, Ewo, Ewo, the bread of life. If you eat it, you will hunger no more. Bishop said, this boy is spiritual. He bought bread, even though he had bread. The Igbo boy went... He said, uh, Daddy, see the, the, the water of life. If you drink it, you will test no more. So the, the Igbo boy sold his water. Then remaining Calabar boy with yam. Bishop has yam. Calabar boy went to meet Bishop. He said, I am that I am. I am that I am. I am that I am. Bishop was hearing, I am that I am. But the boy was saying, I am that I am. If you want to make clothes, for deeper life people, don't use bright colors. You want to make for chosen, don't let them be too short. You want to make for Christ embassy, you know what to do. I won't talk of winner's chapel, I don't want to enter trouble. So you must tailor 
your presentation to meet the spirituality, the psychology. You don't sell shoes where Olu Olumba people are a majority. You must understand the mindset because people buy emotionally. Then build brand popularity. If you are not publicizing your business, you are like a man winking to a girl in the dark. Only you know what you are doing. Nobody knows what you are doing. They, I, I sell more on social media. I sell a lot on social media because my phone is like a cathedral. I have 43,000 followers. Uh, YouTube pays me when I'm sleeping. So these are my followers. If I advertise a product, they buy. My radio program has brought a lot of students to me. So the Christian is too timid most times. You are too shy. Advertise. You don't need to be perfect. When you, you keep improving on yourself, as you are improving on yourself, more money will be coming. Keep improving and improving. Then um, you must have perspective. Where do I want to be in the next 20 years? By the time I'm 70, the project I will embark on is a specialist hospital. I'm a doctor. My son is a surgeon. Orthopedic surgeons are not too many in this part of the country. My daughter's wife, my son's uh, uh, wife, is a cardiologist. My last born is marrying a gastroenterologist. So uh, now show them the package and they know they do anyhow. You don't fall in love anyhow. Okay, I will leave so many things because of our time. Let me just give you one formula, the Apoki formula, and I'm gone. The Apoki formula, please write it down. G times E times S raised to the power 4 all over C is equal to R. G times E times S raised to the power 4 all over C is equal to R, where R represents results. G represents the grace of God. When I look at the several things I have put my hand into, if you put your hand, you might not get the same results I get. It is the grace of God. Number two, E is effort. To grow a business requires consistency, hard work, innovation, and renovation. I told you I cleaned toilets. I was the first bus driver. I did a lot. Today, I don't go there as much as before. I went there recently, and the security man stopped me. Oh, God, where are you going to? Who are you looking for? I said, I'm looking for the owner of the school. He said, wait. They said, go yonder. Go call madam. Come. Go. Now, me be the owner. They don't know me. But I was there all the time. So effort. Don't, don't be directing people when you don't have direction. Put effort. Then S1 is seriousness. Be serious about your business. You don't see how some man doing business and he's joking anyhow. We robots, we are unnecessarily happy. We in the Niger Delta, unnecessarily happy. And you know the reason? It's called fetal alcohol syndrome. Our mothers drink Ogogoro when they are pregnant. And they drink small stout, immediately they deliver. So the alcohol enters the brain of the child because it crosses the placental barrier. So we are, you see, I was organizing him here, we do, 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 you know. Very lousy, rough people. Unnecessarily happy. <laughs> You don't see how some people joking in here. Selling suya or selling watermelon, joking. You don't see them. They are serious-minded. Number two, you must have sustainability in mind. Is this thing sustainable? I know a lot of young men in your denomination, Dickens, pastors, who immediately they made a little money. Their shoulders were like that of peacock. They crashed. Crashed. Is this sustainable? This car, is this sustainable? This lifestyle, is this sustainable? This expenditure rate, is this sustainable? Can you earn per month and spend per minute? This money you are spraying in the party, is this sustainable? Most poor people demand more from you, and they eat and spend more than you. They follow women more than you. So is this sustainable? Then you must have a system. You must have a structure. That's number four. Then C is constraint, limitations. I have tried best in the midst of difficulties and challenges. Where there is C constraint, grace amplifies. If C increases according to 
arithmetic proportion, G will increase according to geometric proportion. One of the problems Christians have is that they believe the devil more than God. Every person thinking evil about me, any person mentioning my name in the coven, it's because you live with, with stupid people. They don't mention my name in Kovun. They mention my name in Water Resources. They mention my name in Benin. They mention my name in Abuja. Are you talking? Are you understanding me? By the time you associate with people of excellence and you demand excellence, avoid the poor. Help them from far. Because poverty is not the absence of money. Poverty is an attitude. A poor man that has nothing to lose, if you employ him, he will help you lose everything you have. God bless you. I remain your friend, Dr. Charles uh, Pokey. These books are, Barista is somewhere with the books. I told them in Ethiopia, even if you can't read, use it to flog your head. Something will enter. God bless you. Hallelujah. I'm sure we enjoyed this presentation. Put your hands together for Jesus. You know you've learned something. Well, before he leaves us, we're going to be taking questions. Now, unfortunately, most of us are going to need to write our questions. However, we're going to give a privilege to one person from each bunch to ask a question right now on the altar. So we'll take one from there, one from here, one from this bunch, and one from this bunch. The rest of the questions, you will need to write them down, and then uh, we'll have him come back and then answer as many as he can. Remember, he taught us about punctuality. Most of us came late. That's why we can't answer all the questions today. So let's have the first question from any of the bunch. You want to ask a question now. Just rise up. One person per bunch. Okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> Please, one, one. nobody has a question. Uh, please come, come, come quick. In case you have a question you don't want to ask verbally, please write your, quest your questions down and then uh, please come, come, come and ask your question. Doctor is here to ask you, to answer you, I mean. Technical, please, we need another mic. So our guest speaker can have one, but in the interim, just ask your question. All right. Good evening, sir. I want to really appreciate you for your time and the yeah, pool of knowledge. Jesus. You said something about an entrepreneur and a businessman. And I wrote down there, you said an entrepreneur has an idea and a passion regarding one or two things that he wants to do. But a businessman sees an opportunity in an entrepreneur, in an idea. I, I feel that for me, I feel that there is a, there's a flow between an entrepreneur and a business person. I, I want you to throw more light because I see it as a tie. Hallelujah. I will want you to Google the difference between entrepreneur and a businessman. Zoom. Zoom was an entrepreneurial idea. It did not make money until COVID. Are you following what I'm saying? Most entrepreneurial ideas eventually turn, um, hello, hello, meet him, he will give you my account details. Uh, you know, sir, as they talk, I they also see money. <laughs> Madam, you want to transfer, eh? Okay. <laughs> Bad guy. <laughs> so, Entrepreneurs eventually become business people. But there is social entrepreneurship, like the Grameen Bank, which is a microfinance bank targeted at the base of the pyramid. So the base of the pyramid, the, 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 he's not making profit. He's not making profit. But the people who get money from him, they are making profit. So, okay, entrepreneurship might eventually gravitate to become business. But business, you don't need to look for a new idea. Look for what is, what is already existing. 
in a place where the need arises, then do it. You don't need to invent the scope, but uh, the spoke, but you can adapt to it, modify it, and then uh, make money. So, the problem I have with young people in Nigeria is they come up with very fabulous ideas. I had one young man in your church. He designed uh, something that can generate power without fuel or whatever. And he was parading every place with it. Nobody was ready to sponsor him. I have another young man I'm mentoring now. He wants, he's producing diesel from waste. How many liters of diesel can you produce to feed you? So, and I told him it is better for him to go into looking at how to convert septic material inside the septic tank into gas for people to cook. That one is easier and you can easily patronize him. So, that's the difference between entrepreneurship and um, business. Now, I see a lot of people. I want to do what I am passionate about. I want to do what I am passionate about. I was listening to an interview by Bishop Enakiri's son. He said that you don't go to shop right and ask how much is this passion. You buy a product, not passion. Until your passion turns to a product, you are not yet in business. And it is not compulsory. I do what I love. If it is not going to give me money, I won't do it. But it is mandatory that I love what I do. Did you get it? It is not compulsory to do what I love. I would have been a great comedian. Great comedian. But I didn't want to become a comedian. But I love, I do farming, but I don't love carrying poultry manure and putting it on top of my cassava stems. It smells bad, but I, I'm mandated to love it because it will bring money. Praise the Lord. Okay. How do you make your children to be interested in your business? Why are some children not interested in family businesses? So, number one, early introduction. The Jewish people introduce their children to their businesses early. Early introduction. All my children know how to make lesson notes, no matter what you are studying. Number two, don't complain about the business in their hearing. Number three, reward them for good performance. My son is a writer like me, so he started writing with his mother. They run the printing press. Now, for running the printing press and publishing books, we've bought properties for him. In one street in Ekubo, he owns 100 by 300. In Ophoma, he has half an acre. Uh, somewhere else, he has a plot of land. We are buying the materials to build a house for him so that when he comes with his wife from Europe, he will have his own property to enter. When he was about to get married, it was his money we sent to him. So then the most terrible thing that prevents children from um, coming to their father's businesses is you always see them as children and you don't listen to their modern ideas. These children are smart People are employing them. They know, they know the phone more than you. So, listen to them. They bring suggestions. That's the problem I am having between my wife and my children. When I tell my wife, you don't need to pay, you don't need to do this. Well, you know, women, some of you women, you are a problem to us. You are very lovely people, very lovely. But when my, my children see my wife and I, I'll tell her, let's sell this land buy another property in the center of town for this young man so that we can open a, a shopping a supermarket downstairs for him so that he can get daily income. No, 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 no. I mean, because I'm in love, I will just keep quiet. And romance and business reduces performance. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for Jesus.